Okay, hello everyone, this is Counter Yolo bringing you another video in Star Trek Online. And in today's video, um, I'll be going over some of the missing Star Trek Special Edition combinations. What I feel are some good combinations available in the game, as well as what I feel um, are decent starships and stuff that Cryptic could be using to use those combinations on. Um, I'll first be setting the stage in terms of how Star Trek Online does its Star Special Station rules. Some specialization strengths of the various bridge officers and what what different commander specialization bonuses you get for different specializations because some of you have been asking for that. And then I'll go over what those missing combos are. Feel free to see the time links in the video or the, at the time bar at the bottom of this video. Um, so yeah, um, first off, before we actually get into the video, I would like to thank all of you who went over to the community tab and voted on the recent poll. Because of that voting, this video is coming out today because as you can see about 35 percent of you voted on this video I, I was actually kind of surprised that as many of you voted on on ground costumes i didn't think there was enough of a space barbie presence but you know at least for those that voted there's a decent amount there the sdo wish list was kind of expected and because of the description on the sdo theory I, I expected this to be at the bottom but ground costumes was way higher than i was expecting um, so yeah, um, because of that, um, that they'll be, those will be coming out during the rest of this month, ideally, if all goes well. These are my tentative things once those topics are taken care of. Um, depending on how the STO lore video does, or the STO theory video, we might end up having STO lore videos every month. Hopefully that video does well. For those of you that are really excited about that video, please make sure that you comment, like, and share that video when that one comes out later on, hopefully at, at the end of this month. Um, I do have one video that's definitively planned and just about ready to go for April for a one year anniversary of something unfortunate that happened to me in Star Trek Online um, that we will get to when that video comes out next month. I'll actually, I'll, be, I'll probably not actually be able to release the full video on YouTube. I'll need to check YouTube guidelines on that one actually. But anyway, um, those are stuff for the, for the rest of the next couple of months ideally. Of course, if you have other ideas, feel free to just let me know in the comments. Um, for setting the stage in general, um, we have five full specializations inside the game. Intelligence, Command, Pilot, Temporal Operative, and Miracle Worker. We also have three partial specializations of, of Commando, um, Strategist, and Constable. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the other one. Um, um, intelligence and Commando are, are specific for space or ground. Commando is, is decent in both, if I remember correctly, but Commando... It's one of those that that's that scales up a little bit to actually do damage for a while, which means it's really only for for elite TFOs if you're going to use use commando. Although the um, the starter trait you get from 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 sorry the starter trait you get from from constables is actually quite good for for budget builds inside the game. So that is that is pretty nice. In terms of these specializations, intelligence and pilot in PVE. Are, are some of the weaker um, specializations, although intelligence is still decent for, uh, for exotic base builds, thanks to Sworn Fuse Anomalies as a starship trait from the Sea Store. Um, command is really strong for tanking as well as for torpedo base builds because of Concentrate Firepower 3. Temporal is the general go to spec for um, exotic builds, but it's quite versatile for many other builds as well. And Merrick Worker is insanely strong because it's commander version. At, at commander, you get a free console. But going in, into these individually, because Many of y'all asked me to do another video on this, even though there's already a video on this on the channel. I'll, I'll go ahead and go through it again for you all. Uh, for the abilities, just going through these, um, Intel team is honestly probably the biggest reason to choose to have, have an intelligence seat. If you're wanting to solo elite TFOs in the game, slotting, to, slotting double intelligence team on your build basically means you're gonna be able to be cloaked most of, of the time while still being able to fire all of your weapons, not just like torpedoes, but all of your weapons, while enemies can't target you as well. So quite powerful in that particular setting. It's also decent in PvP as well. Um, override subsystem safeties, or OSS, is one of those abilities that tons of people love in Star Trek Online. In my opinion, it's way overvalued. Extra power is nice. Extra weapon power does give you a bit of bonus damage, but Personally, I'd rather just choose an ability that just guarantees to gives me an extra 15-20% bonus damage, frankly. Just the way that I am, personally. 
Uh, Ionic Turbulence is a great um, exotic or control ability. And unlike most, most other control abilities in the game, this one is available at Lieutenant rank instead of Lieutenant Commander, like things like Gravity Well. Kinetic Man Magnet is, is, is a decent filler ability for to peel in mind based builds. Um, I don't think this has been rebalanced for how damage and stuff is scaled to level 65 at this point. Um, so I imagine that one could probably use a bit of, of a um, boost and some love. Subnucleon Carrier Wave. Um, basically, if you're not a science captain and want Subnucleon Beam for your build, Subnucleon Carrier Wave is basically the ability for you. Um, Air Weapon Surgical Strikes. Um, back in the day, this was a strong go-to ability for PvP because it gave you lots of accuracy and, and crit. Um, nowadays, because there's so much accuracy in the game and less amount of defense as much, um, many a bit many builds just straight do cannon rapid fire and beam overload for for pvp so less good there and it's not really super great for pve either because it's not like we have any starship traits in the game yet that give you insane crit severity but lowers your crit chance to get that crit severity um we don't have we don't have insane stars traits like that like we, we wouldn't like need a new stars trait that like lowered your your crit chance by like 40 percent, but gave you like 500 percent crit severity like we would need to trade something like that for this energy weapon enhancement to become better now um whenever you have a starship with that has that is a commander something slash intelligence um you get a couple of things first off most uh, commander intel starships get a cloak or if it already has a cloak it gets a better cloak um, this this is the original way that um, that that, that KDF battle cruisers got battle cloaks, um, because um, in most circumstances battle cloaks are only default on Romulan ships, as well as on Klingon raiders, also known as birds of prey. Um, in order for Klingon battle cruisers originally to get battle cloaks, you had to have commander intel, which is which is why the kid was one of the first um, battle cruisers to get a battle cloak on him, because it was commander intel. Um, not all Commander Intel Starships get cloaks. I think there's like three or four that don't, unfortunately. Um, as for the active part of Commander Intel, there, there, there's basically two parts. The first part is Gather Intelligence. This functionally works like the console specialization functionally. Um, you, you build up stacks um, against an enemy. After enough stacks, you can use one of the exposed vulnerability clickies. Defenses lowers their damage resistance and shield resistance, which is my opinion is probably the best one. Weapon systems um, lowers their outgoing damage by a substantial amount, and critical systems gives 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 you a slow a less duration, but it, it's a hold. So instead of lowering all damage, you basically stop their damage for a bit. So both of these, in my opinion, are about the same effectively against a super hard enemy. And if if you're not in elite difficulty. This is just not going to stack fast enough for it to really matter. Um, a couple of downsides to gather intelligence and expose vulnerability from active, the active sensor raise ability. You have to click gather intelligence or push the button on console functionally every single time you use gather intelligence on a different enemy, which is which really sucks. And it's why most of us in the community just ignore this entirely when we have commander intel. Um, if Cryptic actually wants this to actually be used a couple of things cryptic first off have gather intelligence automatically apply to whatever enemy that you're targeting next allow us to acquire the stacks more quickly and then the, and then this is actually fine if, if it's stacked quicker and it automatically started stacking on each new enemy that we targeted this would actually be fine because it's not like that at the moment in Star Trek Online, this is a fairly weak um, ability, frankly. Now it, it's it, it's like the exact opposite of how command works, which is basically you 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 do stacks by using bridge abilities, and then you you have a clicky that affects your entire team. While this is you stack you have stacks against an enemy, and then you use a clicky to hurt them more. I I get that they're exact opposites. The problem is these stacks you 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 don't gain more stacks. Whenever you go to a new enemy, you, you have to go, go from the bottom. If these stacks were at the same stacking time, but they you you could basically transfer stacks from one target to another, 
So you, you, you can apply that, that clicky to your next and whatever you had of stacks, then this would actually be okay too. That's, that'd be another way to rework this to make this, th this a decent thing. Because this is just fairly lackluster right now, plus not all ships that are commander until even get a cloak or an improved cloak if they already have one normally on, on their ship. This is one of the weakest commander specializations in the game. And it's why a lot of your better intel starships are actually lieutenant commander intel with a just better commander special seat alongside it. Um, next one is, is command. Um, there are a couple of buffs that are incoming for Star Trek Online that I will note for these, these abilities. Overall, one of the meters in the past was pretty much just extra shield regeneration that you got from energy damage against a certain target. It was pretty much just a filler ability in the past. We will have to see if the buffs make it actually a viable option in terms of actual survival for your starship. Subspace interception, at least from the notes from Bordicus on Twitter, um, the big buff on it really was that it's more you can use it more often, and the rework also gives it a taunt whenever you use this. Um, the low HP ally aspect of it needs to go away, and just needs to be ability to instantly teleport to an ally and give them immunity and taunt enemies around you. If they changed it to that then this would actually be a very strong ability for tanks. Um, I'll have to see whenever the rework comes out in a week or so to see if that low HP part is still on the ability. If it is, then I'm going to say I still avoid this thing. Um, if that has gone away, then this is going to be actually not only be able, it does not, this is going to be a great way to not only have an extra top for your build, but for a potential way to avoid needing emergency power to engines on your build, because then you can just teleport to an ally that has gone really far ahead of you, and you can teleport right to them, taunt enemies around you, and boom, you're good to go. And you move there quicker. Yay. And you're doing your role as, as a tank. Um, rally point marker, um, when, it, when it comes to tanking, is basically the, the reason why you want a commander seat on a command special seat on your starship it has it has like three different things on it that are all great you it has a respectable instant um aoe heal plus it has an aoe heal over time for you and it has it it helps to cleanse debuffs it has all three of those things on on this ability which frankly makes this objectively the strongest lieutenant level heal in the entire game right now i know bordicus is looking at potentially reworking this thing all the all these those things make it great if anything maybe make it just a one-time debuff cleanse on it would be the way to rework it because if, if if you nerf the, nerf the heal on this too much tanks might drop command entirely frankly i'm um, contrary trade firepower though is basically the bread and butter of, of torpedo builds because of how strong everything is on concentrate firepower it's pretty much shaped how the torpedo, the torpedo meta works inside of star trek online so if you're going to do a torpedo specific build like actually doing for torpedoes doing your damage instead of like torpedoes giving exotic um scaling stuff in aoe's if you actually want your torpedoes to actually fire a ton and to do tons of damage, you want a starship with at least Lieutenant Commander Command to get Concentrate Firepower 3 for your build. Additionally, Suppression Barrage, lastly, is, is a really powerful ability. Um, Suppression Barrage 3 um, lowers the like damage of enemies by like 50% from your energy weapons. It's not gold raining here just because the sticks Terran Dreadnought Cruiser, as well as as well as all flight deck carriers now, have the ability to to um, use frigates that that have suppression barrage three built into their abilities, which basically means you can have the pseudo effect of suppression barrage three in your build from your frigates instead of needing to sacrifice a lieutenant commander or commander ability on your starship to get it. Um, in my opinion, the biggest point of those frigates is the damage reduction to enemies even though both of them have a way to, for your allies to also deal additional damage to enemies too so 
there is those factors of those frigates which make those frigates really really nice to have too um but yeah if you don't have two hangar bays then or, or not using the six suppressor barrage is still a serviceable ability for the commander command additional stuff um command doesn't actually have any true passive um but it, it's active is stuff is the inspiration abilities your first part is you gather inspiration so by using bridge option abilities you gain inspiration um once you once your bar is filled up you're able to use one of three abilities and these are abilities that are that last for 15 seconds and they affect your entire team um in the past when this was this was initially released using one of these inspiration abilities locked out that ability for the rest of your team that happened to have inspiration abilities available to them nowadays um you you most little bit um, cabins can use them at about the same time and what it does it, it it just extends the duration like if you have for instance four captains that all get inspiration full inspiration at the same time and then all use against all odds what you end up with is 60 seconds worth of against all odds for your team instead of just 15 seconds so that is how that basically works um so you're not really punished for having your entire team having commander command in 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 the team anymore um, which is fantastic against the law in my opinion is definitely the best the second best is turn the tide um, because it gives your entire team ad additional damage resistance and lots of full regeneration the worst one by far is battle preparation um, the only way battle preparation is actually going to be decent is if the hopeful rework of reroute re power from life support becomes so meta that you want a person in your team to, to use battle preparation to help with cooldowns. Unless that rework legitimately changes the entire meta of the DPS scene, battle preparation is gonna be the worst one just because I, I, ideally, if you've watched builds like from my channel or Timberwolf or Augmented Dictator Gaming or go to STO Builds and get some advice there, you should ideally be able to handle your cooldowns without needing to use something like this to round out your cooldowns on your own. Um, there are a lot of, of decent simple ways to, to handle cooldowns without needing something like this as as for improvements it'd be nice if commander command had some sort of extra passive maybe extra regen or something for your team um it would be like commander command would be would, would become instantly awesome if you just started with full inspiration on map move if i could change one thing in all this it would be that if you have Commander Command and just could just start with full inspiration on map move, it would mean that you can instantly start with that extra bonus damage for your team, like right at the beginning of ISC and, and HSC. Um, you know, in fact, in fact, it's Space Elite and, and Hive Onslaught Elite. Um, very popular workspace queues. Um, that would be super awesome. If you have multiple, multiple team members that have Commander Command, you could start with full inspiration. That would be super, super awesome, frankly. Um, then you can also, if you're for a tank between that and turn the tide, so you get extra, extra regen as many of your survival cookies start to get wasted away. Um, so interception again, if they, if they remove the low HP ally, ally requirement to, and just allow you to teleport to any ally and do a taunt whenever, whenever you teleport, that will be a, a great, great ability. And again, rear power to life support is the absolute worst, um, bridge option ability in the entire game right now. Um, it is it works the exact opposite of how you want bridge RF abilities to work frankly inside the game so it does need a complete rework from the ground up i'd probably lean towards maybe doing tons of damage but a big downside as well whether it's you can't move or you know maybe even as even if it is a cooldown so if you get an extra 300 percent bonus damage or something at full rank but you have lower cooldowns while it's going i don't know something like that when it comes to the pilot specialization um this is very much a pvp specialization a lot of the abilities here have long cooldowns um there are some niche things um unfortunately lieutenant commander pilot just doesn't really get that much extra from lieutenant pilot most of the other specializations there's actually a sizable jump in power when you go from ensign to lieutenant to lieutenant commander um because pilot doesn't really have that too much its only real jump is when you go really from like ensign and lieutenant up to commander because you get pilot maneuvers 
which isn't objectively super strong, but it's fun. And uh, the fact that this, this is fun is why a lot of people ask for more ships with, with, with Commander Pilot, but not necessarily Lieutenant Commander Pilot, because people want those fat pilot maneuvers. Because it's just super fun. Pilot maneuvers is basically just you have a, a meter, and, and whenever it's full, you can perform a pilot maneuver, whether it's go a little bit forward, go a little bit backward, or you can do a bar roll to the left or the right to more easily move in to position for something um it's 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 more useful for if you're doing if you're doing cannon based builds and you you aren't always able to be in great positions all, all the time you can use a pile maneuver and now you're more easily able to keep the enemies in front of you in, in pve content in pvp pile maneuvers helps you to you know move away or towards enemies they're trying to flee or get away from you um in terms of abilities themselves, I think half situations will usefulness in, PvP, in PvE content. Attack Pattern Lambda is an attack pattern available at Ensign rank. Every other attack pattern in the game is Lieutenant rank or higher for its minimum. Lambda is available at Ensign. So there is a lot of usefulness there. Pilot Team is the pilot specialization version of Ox and Dampeners, which is which are abilities that just give you more speed. Hold Together is the pilot version of Ox to Structure Integrity Field except the skills off of throttle instead of off of your auxiliary power. And also you can just use all those and one of the auxiliaries or whatever at the same time because those aren't on separate cooldowns or aren't linked together for their cooldowns. Fly her apart. This is your bonus damage option. Um, you charge this, this up, you wait a while and damage yourself. And then whenever you click the ability again, you get 10 seconds of extra bonus damage based upon how long you let yourself get damage from the ability first. Rear out reserves to weapons is a haste ability that changes uh, the weapon. Ch it changes the, the, the drain on your weapons from normally from weapons over to engine power. Has some situa situational usefulness, but for generalized builds, you're gonna want to just keep it for weapons. Uh, for improvements, it would be nice to have some sort of pilot passive. I, I understand because of PvP, there could be some issues with this, but then again, PvP already has its issues with balance anyway in Star Trek Online. Uh, it'd be nice if it had more meaningful PvE pilot abilities, especially so that there'd be some sort of meaningful jump to look forward to at Lieutenant Commander Pilot. Because we're starting to get more Star Trek with Lieutenant Commander Pilot now inside the game. It'd be nice if there was something objectively nice to use at the Lieutenant Commander Pilot rank other than fly her part. Seriously, it would, it would be really nice if I could use something legitimately nice there. Um, when it comes to temporal, I'm only going to be listing four abilities here because you could actually argue that every single temporal ability is actually good. And it's because of the entropy mechanic. Um, for, the ent for To use the entropy mechanic properly, you, you're going to need an entropy builder ability, and a, an entropy spreader ability, and an entropy consumer. And they're basically what, what they sound like. Entry, entry builders create entropy. Um, entry spreaders spread that entropy that's already built to lots of other stuff. And entropy consumers use that entropy to do um, greater effects, whether it's like cause reversion, doing extra healing, or the other abilities, which often just means it just does more damage. It basically means that a lot of your, a lot of your less powerful temporal abilities you can still use at lower ranks and use for that build cons spreader or consumer effect, whatever you particularly need extra of in your build. It's for this reason why having starships with Commander Temporal and Lieutenant Commander Temporal is not really that bad, because you can still use that entropy mechanic to, to, to more amplify your, 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 um, your temporal abilities that you really want to have really powerful. In terms of, in terms of the four that I think are really strong without needing to rely upon the entry, entry mechanic, cause a reversion, is the temporal version of engineering team available in engine rank pretty powerful um, for its thing only really is powerful in this engineering team if you use it as a consumer frankly on um, timeline collapse it's basically the temporal version of gravity well but it has a smaller radius but does more damage in that radius chronometric conversion field is the temporal version of suppression barrage except it's just an ability that's good that goes off instead of a continuous usage of you know Entry weapons hitting and does a debuff to enemies. It's just an ability that goes off. And it starts at Lieutenant rank, so Lieutenant Commander for Suppression Barrage, 
and it goes from 50% to 75% um, reduced damage from, from, from the enemy, and enemies within like a couple of kilometers of them. So it's a perfectly suitable lieutenant ability if, if, you, if you need something else to supplement, you know, reducing enemies' damage. Curse of Shearing is honestly one of the shining lights of, of Temporal, frankly, um, especially if you have Commander Temporal and aren't going to be, aren't, aren't be using a beam-based build and are not going to be using exotic abilities and aren't going to be putting Gravity Ball there. Curse of Shearing 3 is super, super strong. Basically, for the next few seconds after you use it on an enemy, any extra damage that you and your allies do against the enemy are stored, and a certain percentage of that is is released again to the enemy after that certain after those couple of seconds. Effectively, the curse of shearing is usable on any build in the entire game. Um, keep in mind, it's more useful in, in elite content because enemies can last long enough for it to be good. But yes, the curse of shearing is super super strong um, for elite, elite difficulty. For Commander Temporal, there's no technical passive, even though Molecular Reconstruction functionally acts as your passive for Temporal. What you get is you activate one of the configurations, Offensive, Defensive, or Support, and you get some extra bonuses and some negatives associated with them. Offensive gives you extra speed and turn at the cost of a little bit of healing to your build. The like heals are a little less, little less effective while you're on, you're on Offensive. Uh, and on defensive, you have better healing, but your speed in turn is, is reduced for each counter that you have of that. For generalized tanks, defensive is the way to go. It gives you a lot of insane healing there. For support builds, if you're going to be a pure um, exotic-based build, this is insanely strong. Um, you get lots of extra exotic damage at the cost of losing energy damage. So if you're just using torpedoes and like set stuff for your weapon anyway, Support is definitely the way to go. If you're a tank and doing pure exotic damage, support is still going to be the way to go. Um, tanks that are doing commander temporal but aren't doing exotic based um, damage for their threat, defense is definitely the way to go. If you're doing a DPS build and aren't doing exotic damage, generally speaking, offensive is going to be the way to go because ideally you'll have a tank the tank to take the threat and damage anyway, so that negative for healing isn't going to be affecting you realistically. The second part is whenever you have the, your full stacks of configuration counters, you can use them all up to do a, a, a deconstruction beam at an enemy that does a certain amount of damage and is able to them a bit of healing to yourself based upon the counters that you that, that you stacked up. Comparatively versus the counters that you get from the passes from this, most players don't use this clicky until like the very last boss like rise it's close to basically being defeated then you use it because it's about to go away anyway and so you just use it just to end the tfo honestly commander temporal is actually of all the specializations it's pretty much the most balanced of all of them and if anything it would be buffing molecular deconstruction beam so that there's more of an incentive to use it during combat um, because right now, part one, the first part, the configuration counters, is just so strong on its own that there's not really much of an incentive looking, looking, at, looking at the DPS of things to really use the deconstruction beam. That's it. Temporal is, is extremely strong, is basically what it just comes down to. Um, with that being said, Miracle Worker, in many ways, is, is a little bit stronger. Um, deploy Gravity Conduction Platform is your Miracle Worker version of a control ability. Um, Exceed Ready Limits um, is your Miracle Worker version of a weapon-based enhancement. Um, it gives you even stronger haste than Pilot, but you damage yourself to do that haste, which means this is definitely not for tanks. <laughs> if you're a tank, you will destroy your own ship by using this. Um, for most of your um, energy-based builds with Miracle Worker, You'll use Nero's sensor bands and mixed armor synergy in, in your build. If it is doing a HRP based build, mixed armor synergy is all you realistically need. They're both really great and they, they give you extra um, a bonus weapon damage. Reroute Shields to Whole Containment has been recent, or at least will be recently buffed, if it hasn't already, um, just so that it's more viable. Um, if you, especially if you're using the American Worker star, Starship that has really high. Um, hole and really low shields uh, because this gives you 
extra hold based upon the percentage of shields that you're basically giving up to use the ability. You basically use this right before you rise, you're getting in, into combat and you get an, an insane amount of temporary H HP with, with, with the ability. It is quite strong. If you're, especially if you're going to be doing a tank build that is going to be full on your hull for survival only and not on your hull and your shields, this is a fantastic ability. But it, it has to be, it's, it's a very situational build and it, it's based upon you know, your particular build and your preferences as to whether you would want to use the ability or not. As for the as for the bonuses of, of getting Commander Temper or Commander Merc Worker for the stuff for this, you, you you've, got, you've got two decent passives. The first one is you get an extra Universal Console for your build. Many captains just want Commander Merc Worker just for that, and they don't care about anything else. They don't care about the Merc Worker abilities. They don't care about any of that. They're just like, yeah, I want Commander Merc Worker for an extra Universal Console. The extra passive is the cyclical quantum slipstream drive. Basically, it's it's the slipstream drive. It's very close to the type of, of slipstream slipstream drive that the Vesta class was able to use to. So the Vesta class and Merc Worker starships are able to have a better slipstream drive in sector space. Keep in mind, unless you're doing two of the, of the galaxy, that's not really going to matter because transwarping to places doesn't cost any any energy credits anymore um so, the, so that bonus is less of a thing anymore the technical active is is innovation effects which is an rng based system most of the rng effects are not really great one of them is you get some separate hp and extra max hp the rest of them aren't really that great so if you really want to use the full innovation effects make sure you have an engineering ability, a tactical ability, and a science ability in your in your Merrick Workers um, build so that you can actually use the innovation effects. If you don't care about that RNG too much, don't worry about it. Really just don't worry about it. Um, and honestly, be, the innovation effects is very much garbage, but you get two passives. One is a nice quality of life improvement and one is really, really nice. So. Overall, in, in, in the balance, Merrick Worker is fine. And um, it would be nice if some of the other Merrick Worker abilities scaled better with EPG. But overall, I mean, even, even exotic builds can handle Science Merrick Worker anyway because there are so many AoE science abilities and such in available to exotic builds. So it's not really that huge of, of a deal, frankly. All right, so with that stuff all said, Let's get into the real stuff, uh, meat me and stuff of this video. Normally for Star Trek Online, they have a couple of rules that they use for tier six starships that I've realized just looking through them because I've looked at them over and over and over again over these past few years making Star Trek comparison videos. Event starships, the so ones that you earn through like the anniversary event, summer event, winter event, generally speaking, they're either going to just have a lieutenant specialization seat or a lieutenant commander specialization seat. They never get full commander spec seating the only exception technically was the rising corvette but in that case their exception was basically you earn the event ship and then you could um buy the fleet version of the rising corvette which gave you that commander pilot seat it was more of the, the thematic thing for that particular ship because it was meant to be the fastest starship in the game and to be the, to be the fastest starship without getting full pilot maneuvers just felt weird. So they, they did that exception to that one, but still even, even then, the raw event ship of that ship was not able to use, or not, not able to have the commander specialization seat. Fleet and Sea Star Starships, generally starships that are just 3,000 or less in the, in the Sea Star or, or from your fleet. Um, the most that they're allowed to have is a commander specialization seat and a lieutenant specialization seat. And both those specialization seats have to be the exact same type of specialization. So. If the commander is temporal, then the, then the lieutenant seat also has to be a, a temporal seat. Once you get to legendary ship as well as all of your loot box type starships, that is where you're allowed to have a commander specialization seat and a lieutenant commander specialization seat, and for those two specializations to actually be different. Keep in mind, loot box starships generally have higher base stats um, than legendary ships, but they are comparable in many ways. For our merit mission specializations in this video, I'm only going to be focusing on the commander specialization stuff and lieutenant commander specialization stuff. 
I'm going to be ignoring commander and lieutenant stuff. Which also means if, you, if when we get new loot box starships that are just they're they're just commander specialization and lieutenant specialization. I'm gonna be pretty much ignoring those because, in my opinion, when Cryptic is releasing new starships that are like that, it basically means they're not actually selling the starship for the bridge officer seating. They're selling the starship for the looks and the trade in in space barbie and such. That's just my opinion, and that's what I'm going with for this video. For some of these parts, it would change it a lot. For our science vessels section, it won't change it much. We'll start with tactical for a moment. Um, as you as you can see here, um, the way I've, I'm doing for color coding, this middle part here will always be in yellow. This is because even though like having having a primary and secondary the exact same specialization is going to be pretty boring um, for a lot of players. Besides temporal, temporal. Um, so I, I have any yellow here just so it's just to clarify that yes a lot of these are probably going to still be no's but it's not going to be as as critical of one to to address in the future as stuff that's already included we have legendary to list which is commander intel and lieutenant commander command so it, it's a great torp boat the zot vosh um, strike wing escort is um commander command and lieutenant commander intel which is great uh, we have the Lost Serena and the Legendary Umbrell, which are Commander Pilot and Lieutenant Commander Intel. We have the Promo Pack to list, which is Commander Temporal and Lieutenant Commander Pilot. And we have the Lobi Store um, Temporal Destroyers. For the Federation, the Klingons, and Romans, they're all basically the exact same stats, just different costume looks on the, on the Starship that are com Commander Temporal, Lieutenant Commander Temporal. And of course, we have our two Merrick Worker tactical ships, the the, uh, the Fabor Juggernaut, that is Commander Merrick Worker and Lieutenant Commander Intel, and then the um, Zenkathy Zentarf um, Dreadnought Carrier, that is Commander Merrick Worker and Lieutenant Commander Command. Because of that, these two ships are quite often considered the best weapon-based starships in the game. The Juggernaut for direct for energy-based weapons, and then the Zenkathy Zentarf for torpedo-based weapon weaponry for um, for for DPS. Other starships like the like this list, I feel it can get very close, but in general, these are considered some of, some of those better starships. But they don't have the best aesthetics versus versus other other classic starships. As you as you can see here, Lieutenant Commander Pilot is fairly neglected, as well as Lieutenant Commander Temporal and Lieutenant Commander Merrick Worker is fairly non-existent here. There are starships with their Lieutenant Commander Mirror Broker that exist for tactical, but none of them, from what I could find, were Lieutenant Commander Mirror Broker with a full spec primary. Just for me when I was looking at things inside of the game. Also, keep in mind, just as another pointer here, um, these ships are the only ones that are that have pilot maneuvers plus a Lieutenant Commander um, specialization C. I would imagine I'm probably missing something, but I can't recall any other ships that have pilot maneuvers plus Lieutenant Commander Command, Lieutenant Commander Temporal, or Lieutenant Commander Merrick Worker, which is which is a real shame. Pilot maneuvers are really fun, but it'd be nice to use other stuff with with those ships too. But um, anyway, when it comes to, to engineering, we we have a lot more gaps filled in here. Um, keep in mind, I have the pilot part here for your commander pod um, blacked out here for the rogue just because we don't have a single um, cruiser subtype in the entire game that has pilot maneuvers. None of them have pilot maneuvers, so that one's fully blacked out. It, that one's not just a, we don't have the secondary specialization, we don't even have the primary one available to any starship in the game for those. Uh, but as for our primary intel, we have the legendary Kelvin Enterprise, which is primary um, Intel with Lieutenant Commander Intel alongside it. We have the Legendary Galaxy X Dreadnought Cruiser, which is Commander Intel Lieutenant Commander Command. And then we have our reworked um, Legendary Enterprise C, which formerly was um, Command, or sorry, um, Temporal Command, and now it is Primary Intel Secondary um, Temporal. This is the Section 31 Heavy, heavy Battle Cruiser, is Primary Command and Secondary Intel. Uh, we don't have any command command that are primary spec command with a lieutenant commander command on top of it. There are a ton of starships, 
like a ton, ton, ton of starter ships that are primary command with lieutenant command. So not really a big deal that that's not there. The only starship that I could find that was primary command with a lieutenant commander pilot was the Undine um, bio, bio cruiser. The lieutenant walker technically also fills this role, but it's only a lieutenant pilot and say a lieutenant commander pilot. So just as an FYI. Again, none of the, the cruisers have lieutenant commander, or sorry, have commander pilot in general. Um, as for commander temper operative, we have the TOSD-7 from Promopax. That is primary um, temporal with a lieutenant commander intel on top of it. In terms of primary temporal with lieutenant commander um, command um, on top of it, we have the Enterprise J and its, and its Romulan and um, Klingon counterparts alongside the Promopack TOS Enterprise. That's also in this category too. We don't have temporal pilot again. Um, as for temporal temporal, we actually have it here as well. The legendary temporal flight day carrier for the 10th anniversary bundle um, falls into this category. The reason why I was I slightly complained about the original bridge I've seen of the Enterprise C of it being here was simply because from a tanking perspective, the temporal flight day carrier would just function better. And from a torpedo perspective, it was very similar to the legendary Glenn, which filled in that type of slot as well. Um, when, it, when it comes to Merc Worker, we have the Promo Pack Inquiry class, which is primary Merc Worker with Lieutenant Commander Intel. Just the, the Intel seat's the same as the regular fleet version, just to get an extra Merc Worker ability bridge off your seat on, on top of it. No Merc Worker command for, for cruisers. Um, we do have Merrick Worker Pilot though, the legendary Enterprise B. Of course, we also have the legendary Sovereign, which is Commander Merrick Worker and Lieutenant Pilot. So similar, but this this one finally has Lieutenant Commander Pilot, so it is gonna be superior for the purposes of this video. No Merrick Worker Temporal, which is kind of sad. That'll be a really nice combo. Uh, for Merrick Worker and Merrick Worker, the only starship in the cruisers that actually has Lieutenant Commander Merrick Worker plus a primary Specialization happens to also be a Merc Worker ship with a Ferengi Merc Worker Battlecruiser. Now, as for um, these sources themselves, you're going to see a fun pattern. Again, Lieutenant Commander Pilot isn't as represented. And the same thing goes with Temporal and Merc Worker. We don't have a lot of ships that have Lieutenant Commander Temporal. And you're seeing this a lot. Kind of unfortunate. Thanks to the, the, the legendary Enterprise C getting its bridge off scenes drastically changed. We actually have two um, starships here that have secondary temporal. Though I would, it would have just been one, like how it would have been originally for the 11th anniversary bundle. But nonetheless, um, for some reason, Cryptic really feels that Lieutenant Commander Temporal and Lieutenant Commander Merrick Brooker is super strong and it shouldn't be on most starships in, in the game, apparently. Like for instance, you know, that recent legendary Vorcha, that is Commander, Pilot, and Lieutenant Miracle Worker. You know that recent promo pack Voyager J? Commander, Pilot, Lieutenant Miracle Worker. Not Lieutenant Commander Miracle Worker, but Lieutenant Miracle Worker on a promo pack Starship. It's kind of unfortunate, especially whenever you're considering that when we're going on this categories, I only found basically four ships. I'm saying basically because technically the Vern has a Romulan and Klingon variant that has the exact same seating and stats and everything. So technically six, if you count those versions alongside this, otherwise four. There's only really like four to six starships in this type of counting for specializations that actually counts for science. You have the Section 31 Science Destroyer, which is Intel Intel. You have the Vern and its Romulan and Klingon counterparts that are temporal temporal. And then you have the leg you have legendary Voyager and the legendary Glenn. Legendary Glenn is temporal command. Legendary Voyager is Merrick Worker pilot. There is a lot of gaps in this. It would have been cool to see more like pilot intel, temporal intel, more like anything more would have been really really cool yes there's like 
two command ships technically, but they're commanding lieutenant seats for, for, for their second seat. So it is definitely sad. Um, again, Cryptic doesn't really like science vessels, so it's not completely unexpected. If you combine all those together, um, we do see some disturbing trends. Um, first off, um, as noted in the tactical section, because most tactical starships, like well, all, all stars that have pilot maneuvers, almost all of them are tactical starships. So with that one only having the only one that has any form of secondary specialization for Lieutenant Commander, it basically means that our big things that are important alongside pilot maneuvers, Lieutenant Commander Command, Lieutenant Commander Temporal, and Lieutenant Commander Worker don't exist for pilot maneuvers, um, for pilot maneuver starships in, in the game. So adding raiders that that would include a lieutenant commander command temporal and merc worker with pilot maneuvers would be quite valuable to the community additionally pretty much in general starships with a that have some sort of primary spec with a lieutenant commander temporal or lieutenant commander merc worker are really really hard to find in the game right now they're almost non-existent so having more starships like this would be pretty valuable um the only big noteworthy thing for escorts along outside of that would be temporal command that's gonna be that's gonna be addressed with science destroyers later in the video um and for cruisers it would be nice if there is a full command ship with lieutenant commander temporal or lieutenant commander Merrick worker because the legendary vorcha just recently came out which is commander command with lieutenant Merrick worker my proposal for, for this cruiser aspect here is going to be command temporal you know and i will talk about that ship later on in in the video for science vessels because of how open this is again i think if we added more ships that were primary temporal with with secondary intel or primary intel with secondary temporal worker there would be a lot of stuff there same thing with merc worker working temporal there'd be a lot of great potential there alongside just adding meaningful science destroyers to the game and i'll get to that in a later slide too now, as for proposals, though, and especially to start off with to tackle this issue right here, I think it'd be cool if we had a nice raider bundle that would that would address the um, that, that would that would address those pile maneuvers aspects and address something else that I was thinking about for a while. One of the coolest things that I found with flying the scimitar as a tank was that I could use the Romulan drone ships. And it was so fun to fly them, not necessarily because they did the most damage out there, but because based upon the, the enemy that, that you were fighting, they would actually, their holographic stuff that they would, they would, they would emit for, for, for their frigates would actually change, and their damage type would also change to basically use the weapon type that, that, the, en that the general enemy type that, that, that was using against you was using, and they would use that against them. It was, it's so cool. Like, Fun example, if you're in a scimitar fighting Federation Federation enemies, it would change these ships would change to NX escorts and 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 use phasers. Like it was so cool. Um, and so in my mind, I think it would be really, really cool if instead of doing that, of like the your hologram is, is changing for same as your fighting as well as your weapons, I think it would be easier on the devs if instead what they did was gave us an option in the ship tailor to basically allow us to basically do a holographic projection of a different ship onto this ship itself and actually have this actually be a flyable ship instead of just a frigate so this would basically become these these platforms basically become basically the ultimate space barbie options inside of the game you'd be able to holographic project basically whatever ship that you own onto the ship itself like hey you want to do pile maneuvers on the, the on the enterprise j now you can do it by putting a holographic projection of the enterprise j if you own it on a character now onto this starship ship for instance hey you're complaining that we don't have a tier 6 nova or a tier 6 oberth no problem just do a holographic projection of that ship onto this ship and hey now you're flying what looks like a tier 6 oberth in your tfos now honestly like this would be an, an insane boost to the community and 
it would allow Cryptic to, instead of looking to the past in terms of trying to basically update their older starships, they could basically just ignore all the old ships entirely and just be like, yeah, we'll make legendary ships for the ones that are popular, that are already tier sixes, and then we can just focus on just a bunch of new starships because let's just be real for a moment. There are a lot of Trek TV shows that have come out recently. There's lots of new starships in those TV shows. Having to worry about putting out more and more of those ships while Cryptic Studios has a smaller dev team for Star Trek Online. It's it, it's a pretty big tackle dealing with those new ships and trying to make tier six versions of, of older ships and make it financially great for the for the shareholders over, over in China. So it it definitely is something that it's kind of hard to justify having a bundle like this to just say, hey, buy this bundle and then, hey, any starship that doesn't have a tier six yet, at least you can have a pseudo tier six with the looks at least um, available to you inside the game. I think this will be a big boon to the community. It allow you to like get away with not having to buy as many expensive ships if all you care about is just space Barbie, because now you can, you can just pick the tier one, tier five starships and, and buy and buy with um with the lithium to get the, many of those looks because you can use a tier one con connie look and hey so you can put that on the friggin now you have a decently maneuverable um connie that's actually a tier six starship um as as for the stats themselves for these ships um the weapons are only slightly different just because of frigates have eight weapons raiders have seven one's an experimental weapon um scout ships just have six because you have your secondary deflector improve raider flanking because none of these ships have cloaks um, otherwise, it's basically the exact same between all of them. They have really low um, base stats and decent maneuverability, but not exceptionally high because otherwise it would outshine a lot of promo ships in the game. So having low stats basically means if you're going to be in a DPS build, the, these ships are fine. If you're wanting to tank, there are definitely sh other ships you should be picking instead. But, but the vast majority of the player base are going to be doing DPS anyway, so these ships shouldn't be that huge of a deal. And even though this isn't you know, the greatest aesthetic in the world, you're gonna be using your multi-spectral emitters to do holographic stuff on top of it. So you can pick whatever look that you want. The only downside is that you have that, you'll have that slight shimmer like you would have with any other holographic like bridge officer, but you put on your ship instead of a bridge officer. So I think that this would be an, an insane boon to the community. And of all the options I'll be proposing in this video, I want Cryptic to choose, if they were only gonna choose one, choose this one. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about legendary science destroyers. Um, in my opinion, over the past few years, I mean, thinking more and more and more about how I would want future starships to be, science destroyers have the greatest potential of any starship subclass in the entire game. And it's not just because Crypto could release new, you know, um, you know, new secondary deflectors and experimental weapons that are parts of sets and that these ships can have both. So you can have multiple set bonuses with those if Cryptic goes that route in, in the future. Really unlikely because Cryptic kind of ditched that idea after secondary deflectors were introduced. But they could go back to that eventually. Um, really, the biggest thing about Science Destroyers is that they have the potential to appeal to basically every single type of player in the entire game. Because it's a science-based starship, you can do exotic-based builds on them. Because you can transfer the tactical mode, they have the potential to appeal to um, weapon-based DPS players inside the game too. And because they generally have higher base H H HP than a lot of other science ships in the game, they are the equivalent of many ways of almost like a light cruiser or like a battle cruiser or a warship or destroyer, hence the science destroyer name. Um, but really the biggest thing is that the nice thing about this is that if you're going into tactical mode and your commander specialization and your lieutenant commander specialization are on your two bridge officer abilities that can, they're actually going to change when you go into tactical mode, you have this fun ability of being able to use that commander version of this secondary specialization while getting you know your, your bonuses from your commander specialization. So if, say, for instance, your commander specialization is really is a fun but not necessarily meta pve thing like like commander pilot 
but you would like to have pile maneuvers, and you'd rather have something else that's more meaningful at commander rank like temporal, so you can get, get recursive sharing three, you can go into if your ship was commander pilot and lieutenant commander um, temporal and go into tactical mode, you'd still be able to have pilot maneuvers and you'd be able to use recursive sharing three on the exact same starship. There is a lot of potential for lots of cool combinations here. And then Crypto Crew could, you know, spice this up more with lots of different secondary specializations in that lieutenant, lieutenant commander seat so that it could appeal even more to weapon based players that would be going into tackle mode with one of these starships. Um, to start off with, for something like this, I would want to start with something that would that would more easily appeal to both player races instead of just weapon based players because you could actually build these ships so that they appeal really heavily to weapon base instead of science players. So my, my proposal would be to have a legendary science destroyer bundle that's based, up, based off of the tier five Solne science destroyers. And you basically make them tier six, you give each of those original ones a new skin, you, you, you make a dominion version that, that, is, that is new and is tier six, so you don't have to worry about skin customization issues because it would just be a brand new skin. And then you would make a legendary Titan new skin that would kind of fall in the middle between a Solne ship and a, an Iconian ship. And keep in mind, you could easily do some of those aesthetics because, I mean, the Dyson Science Destroyers and the legendary Titan have have some reminiscent similar profiles whenever you look at kind of those ships side to side. So my thoughts for these ships is, is to have five Science Destroyers one for each um, primary specialization and to have that lieutenant commander tactical seat be temporal this would be so that if you want to just fly one of these ships and you, you just want the space rubber aspect and you want you want to be a pure science player you can still do pure science just fine and you can ignore the tactical abilities altogether and just put three temporal abilities and just have you know an entropy builder and an entropy spreader and, and an entropy consumer as 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 your three temporal abilities in that seat and be perfectly fine um however if you really want to go with you know going into tactical mode there are lots of different options here still um like you know you can with the kdf version my proposal here is that it's science miracle worker so you can go in, into tactical mode and now you have recursive sharing three plus you have an additional um, universal console available to your build. So some nice bonuses there. Um, Dominion, of course, I, 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 I'll put this one as the pilot one. So you have cursor sharing three plus pilot maneuvers. Legendary Titan, Commander, uh, it's the command this. So you'd be able to have recursive sharing three plus contrary firepower three, and you would have inspiration abilities instead of like a reconstruction which would be much more ideal for torpedo-based builds because a molecular reconstruction doesn't have any significant boost for torpedo builds. While Inspiration Abilities has an option to get an additional 33% bonus damage for 15 seconds as one of its clicky abilities. So from a DPS perspective, this type of starship going into tactical mode would be more ideal for torpedo builds. Just throwing that out there. Um, there are, there's, there's a lot of great things here. As for, as for the raw stats, this is how I would basically have them. There's your Federation, Klingon, and Romulan version. Doesn't really need to be crazy with differences bridge out for seeing, it's just the specializations that would be changing between them. In terms of the raw, the raw stats, I'm basically averaging out from the from the Fleet Titan um, and versus the other um, science destroyers that exist in the game. And that's about what, what the average stats would end, end up being. It's nothing super spectacularly high or low. It's just what I would think would just be about average for what a science destroyer basically would, would be in today's Star Trek Online. Nothing really spectacular. There's those ships, and this is what the Titan and the and the Dominion ship would basically be in terms of their stuff. Um, not insane. Um, just something really, you know, basic um, along those lines. Um, and in my opinion, it, it would appeal to basically everyone. As long as you're someone who didn't care about hangar bays, that make it basically hangar bays being a necessity for your build, it applies to basically every single other play style in the, in the entire game. And so even though it would only be five ships, because they're five ships that basically work for basically any play style, it almost, ha it almost has the effective 
effect of almost like 10 ships worth of actual builds that you could do with these ships. So for me, this, this would work as, a, as a, an effective legendary bundle, just for me throwing it out there. Now, um, going forward, at some point, Cryptic needs to add the legendary Bortosk. It really needs to come out. Um, I wished it was part of the, KD, the, 10th, the 11th anniversary bundle. It really should have been in there. Um, sure, it's not the most iconic ship, um, and so I know not, not everyone loves, loves the looks, but it actually is fairly high, highly detailed considering other ships, especially at its time. It's very highly detailed. It is, it's a very solid ship from that design aspect. It's downside of why it didn't sell well in the past. We already had the Fleet Kirk and Fleet Arbiter come out before the Tier 6 Bortas came out, and those were five three battle cruisers. And so whenever they said, hey, we're going to release a new Tier 6 flagship, and it's a 4-4 battle cruiser. People are like, what? We wanted a 5-3 ship, and so it, it just didn't sell well. Combine that with, with the fact that you had the Scimitars, which were 5-3. Um, and they're like, why, Cryptic? <laughs> but yeah, um, basically to make this awesome, I think that they, they should, should rectify it. Um, now for this, I have got three different options because I don't know, because you know, I don't know the inner workings of Cryptic. I don't know what all the restrictions are for these ships. So I'm, I'm gonna give three different options, three different scenarios. Scenario number one, let's make it a 5-3 ship and let's give it a commander and lieutenant commander combination that doesn't exist in the game yet. So for this one, my proposal would be commander command and lieutenant commander temporal. It doesn't exist in, in the game yet. And we'll, we'll keep it at five tactical consoles because that's what the, the tactical version of the ship has. Because Captain Corn is an engineering officer, um, this Lieutenant Commander seat should be en en engineering alongside the standard Commander Engineering and Lieutenant Commander Tactical that is kind of to be expected for a lot of these types of ships nowadays. For its base stats, again, because in my personal theory, it has to be objectively stronger than, it, than the Federation versions. A lot of Federation starships at this point in time if you're going for high HP, you're you're hovering around between 1.45 and 1.55 hull. So for the ship to stick out, in my opinion, it's got to be at least 1.6 hull. Or for it to really stick out to a lot of the players, be like, hmm, maybe this is something I might want to pick up. As for shields, 1.1 shields is pretty standard. Anything less than that means that you you really can't rely upon your shields to tank. Just just in my opinion that, that that's how it, it should be when you're going to have hold that high as to be expected on starships like this you're going to have a lower turn rate and slightly low slightly lower impulse i'm sorry but like i i can't justify six turn rate when i know other, other ships that are going to be this high and hold are going to be suffering on their turn and impulse as well it's just going to be just to just to be expected and it is just the way it is um I'm going to keep it as, as a standard cloak for my, my, my proposal. Um, as a flight deck carrier is what my proposal is, is for these ships because it's got to be, it's got to stand out. Um, I, I think it should keep the standard cloak probably just because Captain Corn isn't someone that I really see that would use the cloak that often. Her honor is very different from the way that most other Klingons view honor. She and Worf have a different version of honor than most of the rest of the Klingon Empire. I'm actually kind of kind of sad that Cryptic has not been leaning in on that. Um, I hope that in these last couple of missions for the KDF arc that, 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 that they're doing, that they actually bring in Captain Corrin and have her and have her put, you know, Jula and everyone else in their place, be like, this is honor. <laughs> you know, this is my version and it's awesome. Hopefully they, they do that or in the next arc that, that comes out this fall that, that they bring her back in because I think she is needed. Um, anyway, because of that, I, I don't think she that this needs to have a battle cloak. It'd be nice if it did, obviously, but I don't think it needs it. Um, if Cryptic feels that that um, flagships cannot have more than one specialist seat, like the Legendary Odyssey only had a commander's a specialist seat on it, 
and they feel that the ship has to follow the same way, then okay, fine. We'll keep it as a Fire 3 ship with, with its horrible turning. But now what we're going to do is we're going to make this Lieutenant Commander Tactical Seat into a, t a Commander Tactical Seat. So now we actually have the ability to have a Reverse Shield Polarity 3 and um, Cannon Scatter Volley 3 all on the same Starship. So this, this would add some extra benefits too from a DPS standpoint and survival standpoint. Lo lots of great stuff here available to you. If you're going to do a torpedo-based build, you're able to have, have, have a high attack pattern o o Omega to, to proc stuff from um, the legendary Talus um, Starship as well. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, alongside that, we're basically we're pulling the, the lieutenant ability from this seat and making it a, a commander ability for that sacrifice and not having a secondary um, special, specialist seat. And finally, if Cryptic feels that, that this ship has to be a 4-4 ship instead of 5-3, we know the Cryptic sometimes doesn't update weapons because we saw what happened with the legendary Burrell. So we know that this is a possibility. And so if Cryptic doesn't update the weapons, in my opinion, this ship not only has to be a flight deck carrier, but has to be a miracle worker flight deck carrier. And for and for a type of 44 scene as a result of that. This is if Cryptic makes this one as well, this would also be a decent starship too. Because this would basically become your default broadsiding miracle worker starship. You get seven tactical consoles and two hangar bays. And a and a really high hole. So this this would be better than your miracle worker cruisers that exist in the sea store right now. This would still not be better than the Bob War Juggernaut. And so, and because, it, because this is still just 4-4, it's still not going to be better than your um, your Discovery D7 flight deck carrier, even though it is Merc Worker Starship. Losing two consoles to not have an extra forward weapon is going to cost you in, in damage. So there's that, there's that to consider. Those are my three different options that I think could all work. And I think all three of these would work to sell um, when it comes to if Cryptic and hopefully when Cryptic releases a legendary um, Bortosk to, to um, the players in, in the future. Especially because at this point, it's probably going to be a standalone starship um, if and when Cryptic releases this starship. All right, cool. Um, and of course, for the, this next one, a new Legendary D7 has been teased quite a bit. It's not 100% sure whether it'll be the Discovery D7 or the TOS D7. My gut feeling is that because of all the recent stuff for Discovery Klingons over this last recent update with the anniversary, my gut feeling is we're going to get a Legendary Discovery D7. And it's going to be part of that Legendary KDF Captain bundle that I thought was going to come out with um with 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 the anniversary update now to not compete with that the promo discovery d7 or and for it to be singly different than the legendary scope enterprise there are a couple of different ways that i could see the ship being made in that bundle first off option one is basically just make it like the the legendary discovery Enterprise Temporal Flight Deck Carrier. The beam basically the exact same weapon layout, impulse inertia turn, you know, bridge off scene and all that. Difference is just being that this ship is a, is a D7, so it gets a battle cloak. And um, instead of adding the 0 0.05 to shields uh, that the legendary had over the um, promo pack version, instead we'll add 0 0.05 hull to this ship. Because generally speaking, for a lot of your older Sea Store starships that had differences for the between the Federation version and the Klingon version, the Klingon version had a little bit higher hull, while the Federation one had a little bit higher shields. So in this vein of thought, I thought that made sense to just do it that way um, for the overall balancing. My other two variants here for this for the Discovery D7 is have a have a slightly different bridge off proceeding of just Lieutenant Science and Lieutenant Commander Tactical with that. With the extra lieutenant reversal as well just being special station seating here alongside the commander engineering special station seating um, option number one here for me is to make a discovery d7 pilot flight deck carrier so this one wouldn't necessarily be stronger than this one 
but it would definitely be more fun because you're able to launch two waves of hangar bays of fighters and um you can use reinforcement squadrons from the pilot specialization which is strongest at commander pilot the it was one of the weirdest abilities that i was like why is this ability one that goes from lieutenant to commander when it's sort of hard to justify pilot maneuvers on, on starships that have two hangar bays um to get that but i'm like you know what cryptic has done has done weirder things weirder things in star trek online so you know what let's just throw this out there and see what the community thinks about it so this is just my idea for this i don't work at cryptic by the way um it's just to do it this way pilot pilot again that's a combination that doesn't exist right now we don't have a commander pilot with a temporary pilot as a single starship that exists in the game right now so i think this would be a fun combo still as well um but yeah and then option three is to use another bridge officer combination that doesn't exist in the game either be commander intel and lieutenant commander miracle worker now the intel part here um is based off of um the tos d7 from promo packs um, because the tos d7 has commander temporal and lieutenant commander intel so i i, I think it'd be fun to just give a d7 full intel and improve its cloak from a battle cloak to an enhanced battle cloak sure you don't have the tank merit command so you can't really capitalize on this enhanced battle cloak as much but i think it still would be fun to basically have it from time to time be able to use and fire from cloak whenever you want to have fun with with the ship um again intel Worker doesn't exist um as any other combination to my own from what i can recall anyway in in, in the game at the moment oh and one last thing um for a commander pilot the other reason to justify it on a d7 um, for those of you that have played through um, played through all of the TOS Federation specific missions, if you played a TOS Federation captain, your very last mission, the Battle of Kale 5, um, there is a D7 that does something very reminiscent of a pilot maneuver um, during the battle, during the cutscene. So we know that D7s can do fun maneuvers in the game itself. So I think it would be fun to have a D7 to have those maneuvers. Just me thinking out loud here. Um, before we get to this, you know, the closing of the video, I just wanted to give a slide for you all, for those of you that were wondering, what are my thoughts on what a, a Nova in Oberth and an Olympic would look like for tier six? And there's a slide for you all. The Nova doesn't really need much changes, honestly. Um, just a new skin and change into a scout ship and given pilot maneuvers. It doesn't need anything really. <laughs> um, for the old birth, um, I went back and forth on this a lot. I, I kept on thinking, you know, the old birth has got to be weird. Um, but at the same time, it's so small, it's either got to be a regular science vessel or it's got to be a scout ship. But the Nova fits better as, as, as a scout ship than the old birth. So it would be redundant to have two scout ships. So why not just keep it as, as a regular science vessel? But it's not durable. It's not known for weapons, really. It just blows up on screen. So why not make this a fully forced science vessel? Because think about it. In, in Star Trek, that's just what, what the Oberth is. It's just a science vessel. So that doesn't really do anything else. So why not have it Commander Temporal, have it completely full, completely forced um, science seating, really low hull and shields, and have it only have, sci have, have, have science consoles plus the one universal from tier 6x. I think that would be really weird and really fun. And this would become pretty much the budget Vern from the fleet. Really low stats versus the Vern. So the Vern has some clear advantages alongside having instant engineering for Mars Part Ox with, with that one trait that gives you lots of crypt with Mars Part Ox. But this would be a really fun really weird type of build to make just kind of throw that out there this would be fun and interesting um lastly for the fleet olympic um, i kept on thinking about this especially because with last summer with 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 covid and they released that that um that summer giveaway thing that you got bashir for free and um, you got that uss hope um admiralty card i was like hmm 
the Olympic doesn't have a tier six variant yet inside the game. So how would I build a hospital ship in terms of balance inside the skin? I'm like, well, hospital ship, you got it would either be for support or it would be for tank. And I'm like, eh, well, it doesn't really feel like it would still be a ship either that would be really much of a weapons based starship. So why not lean in on a lot of force science and engineering seats for this ship? And give it really really high base stats and so that so that was my thought for this ship it has high hull and shields as a result it's turning is much lower than what when what the tier 5 version is and it has five engineering and five science consoles with only one tactical console pairs with that ensign universal um but it has two, two universal consoles because it's commander miracle worker by the way for tanking purposes miracle worker voyager is better because of a blade of armor just as an FYI. Um, if Cryptic thinks that the, the multi-mission aspect of the ship is too strong, just have it just be a regular science vessel with something like this. And then have it just be Merc Worker and Secondary Reflector. Maybe a little bit lower stats if you really feel that that's too high as well. I think something like, that, like this would be perfectly serviceable for, for the Olympic as a fantastic tank or, or support ship from, from the fleet. Just me thinking. All right. Cool. Anyway, um, thank you all for liking or watching the video. Uh, feel free to like and, and subscribe if you like this type of content. Uh, I'm trying my best to put out videos more regularly, especially with other things going on at um, IRL. Um, it's nice to be able to have videos out just to kind of work on this stuff and to kind of relax. Um, but anyway, anyway um, feel free to put stuff in the comments if you have other thoughts, especially with like upcoming videos and such. If I did errors in this video, feel free to let me know there were a lot of different starship um, combinations that i tried my best to put all in in this video there's definitely a likelihood that there are starships that i'm missing and there's also a possibility that crypto could release this star that a new starship on tuesday that i didn't know about before i recorded this video so that's definitely a possibility too so yeah anyway thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day and week